I'll be the first to admit this, I suck at the guitar, royally. I've never got it, never will. That's okay, because I get by, but I wish I could play it, you know, like in the way that I can on a piano. The thing is, I have a couple of guitars, and sometimes I'll take it off the wall and I'll say, you know what, today's the day. Today's the day I'm gonna try and play the guitar. So I'll plug it in and I'll get my effects going, my little amp simulator, and I'll finally fumble my way through the melody line, only to have lost that spark, that flow. And so I kind of abandon it, which is such a shame because I love the sound of the guitar. So many of the film scores that I grew up listening to have guitars in them somewhere. And whether it's just a simple acoustic or an electric plugged through a whole chain of pedals, it moves me, it's human, it's emotive. Much of what I love about guitars in this more cinematic context is their ability to contextualize against synthesized elements and effects, to take a mono sound source and turn it into this three-dimensional universe of sound. And it simplifies my writing, it encourages me to write more simply because it's not about elaborate chord progressions or firing through complicated passages. Sometimes it's just a simple exchange of a couple of chords that really moves you. And in the context of film music, Music, that's that's quite enough for me. And what I love about sampling is this junction between real recordings and technology to be able to create something that physically wouldn't have been possible without the art of sampling. I've been playing with Hemisphere by Fracture Sounds the last few weeks, and I think it captures that junction really, really well to be able to create something that sounds really realistic, but also takes the technology, takes the preparation out of just getting an idea down. Now, long-term subscribers to this YouTube channel will have seen my videos about Fracture Sounds in the past. I think Woodchester Piano was the first one, and I really believed it was an upright when someone sent me a stem of the Woodchester Piano. Um, that was the first time they were really on my radar. Now, this video is slightly different to those other videos in that I've actually partnered with Fracture to make this, so you should know that up front, but I wouldn't make a video for my own channel unless I truly stood behind a product or a company. So you should know that as well. Well, these are my own authentic opinions. So I came up with this little piano idea the other day. So that was the idea I had, and I thought, what could I do to add guitars to this, to use Hemisphere in a really creative way? Um, so I actually started with these distant galaxies, which sound like this. this lovely fuzzy sound to it and the harder you hit the notes the more distorted it sounds and I like distortion that's nice doesn't get in the way, it's simple, it's got a core sound to it, and I've removed the transients here so you don't get any of the bite of the initial sound. So that's the first thing I added, and in context with the Woodchester it sounds like this.
The second thing I wanted to experiment with was this afterglow patch. Which sounds lovely on its own, but then I thought I want to use this feature that I don't think any other library has, which is that the pitch bend only affects notes that are held down in this particular mode that I've got it in. So say I held this chord here, I'm going to sustain the chord, and then I'm going to let go of all the notes except this top one, and now I'm going to use the pitch bend to bend it up to a B. Let me show you some more chords like that. Now this is the kind of effect that I could only hope to do on an actual guitar, but as I say, I'm not very good at guitar anyway, so this is definitely a feature that I'm going to use again and again because it's really creative and it sounds really nice as well. So I actually had a go here and this was a little improvisation that actually ended up sounding really, really nice. Let me play in context with the parts I've already added here. So simple, yet really, really beautiful. Next, I wanted to play with the Celestial Orchestra patch. Now, this is based on the clean harmonics. Um, I'm not actually using the raw, I'm just using the atmosphere layers, but have a listen to this. It's got this sort of tremolo sound to it, which I love. Again, taking that mono sound source and turning it into a 3D sonic soundscape. And again, what I love is it's just so light that when I add it to these parts I've already got, it doesn't get in the way. It just adds that little veneer on the top. From this next section here, I really love using this delicate patch, which is actually the patch that the guitar first loads when you open the instrument. In this section, I'm basically just playing the main chords arpeggiated, but I wanted to do it in triplets to give it a more laid back feel. If 
I just solo the elements that I've added, you'll hear the effect this has. So this is just the guitars by themselves. It's a beautiful soundscape. Um, the only other thing I'm adding at this point is from Glacier Keys. Which is sort of like my bass part, I suppose. I carry on using the Celestial Orchestra later on, but I've mangled some of the settings to give it a slightly more upfront and present feel. I don't know if you can call this a melody, but I really wanted this this line. To carry on through. So I'm using the alone patch here, um, which has a really lovely echo in it. Um, so I'm using the modern echo at uh, a half note. And with sounds like this that normally have a really hard transient to them, you'd hear that in the reverb, it would almost kind of puncture the reverb. But what I really love, and this is a feature that, again, I haven't really seen in other libraries, is this reverb fade in. So if I turn this off and turn the reverb up so you can hear it, we get this sudden burst of sound. Whereas if I use the fade in here, it basically just gradiates that, that entry. And again, this is something that would not have been possible without the act of sampling and using the technology in this way. And it's just so musical. The last element I've added here is Nightfall, and this is a more typical guitar sound, but it's got a lovely mid-range saturation to it. So I've got this playing an arpeggiated triplet pattern. And with the other parts here, it sounds like this. So I've only covered a few patches from this library, but check out Will's walkthrough. I'm gonna leave it linked at the end of this video um, and down below if you wanna check that out because he really goes in depth to cover everything in the library. I just wanna play you this piece from the beginning to the end. Um, check it out if you're interested. I really love this library and I'm gonna use this a lot. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done already and I'll see you again very, very soon. Mm -hmm.